Hi, this is Matthew with Out Fishing 13. Although I do a lot of work on fishing reels and enjoy going fishing, I actually enjoy sewing. And a couple years ago, I started buying old Singer sewing machines. And one of my favorites was a 500A. This is the slant omatic or the slant machine, and they call it a Rocketeer. But it had a problem that a lot of people have experienced, and that is it skips a stitch and it gets stuck. And um, I communicated with an old senior sewing machine repairman. Um, I can't remember his name now, but um, I'll put uh, one of the guys that helped me out also was Andy Tube. And so I'll put some links to his videos as well. But um, I repaired my machine after communicating with this one old sewing machine repairman. And uh, it worked. It resolved my problem. But it does require a little bit of, of disassembly of the sewing machine and grinding the part down. And let me show you what, what I'm going to do and explain the process. So just stay tuned. Let's um, get this done. If you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Um, if you're a little bit intimidated by this, you might want to take it to a sewing machine repair person and show them the repair that is actually done. But it was part of a knit kit that was done for these particular machines when they started introducing different types of thread and fabric. And this machine didn't like it and it was getting stuck on things. Let me show you. Here we go. So I've already taken apart some things on this. And... Um, We've got to take uh, this off. And here's the part I'm talking about. Um, let me take out the bobbin holder. But this piece right here is an alignment um, piece that lines up the the bobbin case this piece right there it keeps it in place and down here down here let me see if I can get in there and, and look and show it to you okay on your machine down here it's broken is a little pin and it's called a delant pin and this, that little pin is the piece where the thread would get wrapped around and then stuck. And some of you have probably experienced this if you have one of these, um, these 500s. And it's very frustrating. And sometimes it happens a lot and sometimes it doesn't happen at all. And I'm going to show you how to f I fix my machine. And if you're pretty handy... You should be able to do this. It isn't too difficult at all. Get this machine fixed. This is a machine I'm going to fix up for my son and daughter-in-law. So we need to take out this spring here. And we need to take off the dogs. Now I've already loosened them up some. So we just need to finish taking them out. It helps if you have a little, sh really short, stubby screwdriver like this to get into there and get this, and then then you can loosen it up all the way. Okay. Okay, there. We'll just set that aside with the screws in it. Okay, now we can get a better picture of the delent pin or this alignment pin. And we need to take this out. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to modify this piece. Okay, so we need to tilt the machine up. There's two screws that you need to loosen up. The first one is this one right here. And, and remove this gear right here. Now I've already loosened it up, but one of the things that I did that you'll want to do is you'll want to line up um, just just anywhere on here. Clean these gears off and get a little get a marker or and I've I've just used some red um, 
uh, fingernail polish for my wife when I just put a little dab on there it'll stay on there for a good long time but you want to line up this screw with this little slot here so you can get a screwdriver right down in here sideways and take this out and then there's right back here um, let me see if I can show it to you right back here um, right there there's a screw right there and that holds in that alignment um, the the bobbin case alignment piece that has the d-lint pin and it just needs to be loosened a, a one turn just to loosen up a pin right there to take it out so let's let me just do this real quick and take this um, out so we'll just loosen this up and take it out okay and set it aside and then I'm gonna come in here Let's see if I can show this to you. Oh, yeah. We're just going to loosen up this screw right here. A turn. And then that will allow us to set this back down. Comes out as one piece when you pull it out. It just pulls up. And it will all come out together. And then carefully, without nicking your needle there, Rotate this around so that you can take this off right here. You have to kind of rotate it right here and then take it off. And we can set this right back in here for the time being because this is the piece we're going to go modify. Now you can see right here, let me point with my screwdriver. Typically there's a little pin here and it sticks out about um, 3 sixteenths of an inch. And what happens is the hook brings that thread around and some, for some reason it'll get hooked onto the other side, this one loop. And then it stops it and it can't go anywhere. So part of the delant process was to take and cut that off and either solder it and then polish it up. Well, this is broken. It doesn't need to have all the structural strength in this is up in this part here. So I'm just going to take my Dremel tool and we're going to grind and smooth this section out. So let's go over here to my shop and grind this out and smooth it off and make it nice and polished and we'll put it back in and we won't have that problem anymore. Okay, I got my Dremel tool here and I've got my piece here. You can see right there. It's kind of hard to get a close up here, but you can see where it's broken right there. All I'm gonna do is kind of take that corner down and grind it down a little bit so that um, there isn't a chance for thread to get stuck on there anymore. So I just got a little grinder um, wheel on this Dremel and um, I'm going to take it down. Okay, that's good enough. There's nothing that the thread is going to catch on in there. And so now I'm just going to polish it up. Make sure there's no burrs on it. You know, all I use is one of these little wheels like this, and that polished it up really well. I don't think I need to do any more than that. So the hole is still there. 
and it might collect a little bit of lint, but the thread is not going to come down and get wrapped around behind it. It's, if it comes, if it does get pulled over here, it will release and it'll just go off. So that's all you need to do is taking that corner off there, and and then let's so let's go put it back in. So I'm, a, I'm feeling that some little burrs on here while I'm inspecting that. I'm going to clean up with some really fine sandpaper. So give me a minute. I'm going to do that and then we'll finish putting this back together. Okay, while we got this apart, we're going to clean some of this gunk out. Okay, before I put it together, I'm going to put a little bit of oil down in here on this, just a drop. Okay. Okay, here's my piece that goes on the hook. Okay, to put this back on, it needs to go on. Like so. Then this little post right here goes down in a hole down there. And then this goes in here and we just need to make sure it's lined up. So here we go. Okay, now that's sitting down there and it needs to just sit down in there all the way. So all we need to do now is turn this over and tighten this screw that holds this in place and line this this up. Okay, so there's our mark right there and here's our mark right here. So let's get these lined up properly. Okay. Now see there I got my mark lined up. So that's lined up properly. We just need to make sure that the flat right here is lined up properly right here with that screw right there. And then when we tighten it down, that should get us the timing so that the timing is on. If we, and, and then it should be good. If we have to retime it, we're going to have to um, loosen up this the set screw that's on one of these and, and do the timing. But I don't think that we should have to. Usually you can... If you get this set down on the flat just right, let me turn that. See if I get the, it on the flat just like that, then we're okay. So I'm gonna reach back here and just wiggle that a little bit to make sure we're. That should be good. And I'll check the timing. And then we need to tighten up this little screw right here. It tightens in. The bobbin case alignment bracket. And that's it. I got it all back together now. I need to go grab a needle and we'll check the timing to make sure the timing is right on. Then we'll put a little bit of oil on this and try it out. But now as you can see, right down in there, there's no way that that, that pin is removed and that corner has been ground off and we shouldn't have any problems 
anymore with that. Okay, there's a size 16 needle. And that's perfect. The timing is right on. That's the way it should be. It should come, the point of the needle should go right behind that. Then it should start lifting up. So it goes down all the way. And started lifting up. And there should be a little tiny mark over here. Okay. Right, let's put it back together. Take this needle out. Put the dogs back in. Yeah, that looks pretty good. See how this does sewing up. One piece of fabric.
looking pretty good. Let's try some zigzags. Let's try all these fancy patterns on here. Uh, let's try a B, an L, B, and an M. Let's try a B and an N. something else. How about a B and a P? D and an R. We'll do some other weird ones. change it to something kind of interesting. We'll do a G and an N. There's a bunch of different stitches you can do on this. Let's see what that looks like. different than some of the others. Let's try something else. just aren't very different than others. <laughs> Okay, 
That's awesome. I'm going to go back to my regular straight stitch and I'm going to double it up and see how it will do going through some really thick stuff. Let's see how it does. Okay, well, that really did resolve the problem, and it's fixed pretty nicely, and um, as you can see, it's sewed wonderfully, and it's not giving me any problems. There's a few things I need to fix on this. This little cover thing had a hinge that was broke on it, so right now I'm in the process of fixing that. It just needs to be cleaned up. I need to lube it and, um, and clean it, and um, <clears throat> I've got a different foot for it right now. I'm just using the knee foot which is neat but I'm going to actually take this out of this cabinet and put a 401A in it and give this one to my son so that it's in a portable case so that he can uh, use it in his apartment and, and then store it away because he doesn't have a lot of room. But these 501 Rocketeers are really nice and, I, and that that um, fix I did where I removed the lint pin on, on the um, the bobbin bobbin case um, retainer or positioner pin is what it might be called. Um, that resolved the problem. So any of you out there that have one of these 500As that really love it, and it is a fantastic machine, um, it's very strong. You can sew a lot of things with it, and it's got all these neat stitches. Um, it's manual. It's all gears. There's no belts in it and it has a very strong gear drive motor um, just a fantastic machine but if you're having that problem and you don't know what it is and you've done everything that you could to think to resolve it that's probably the problem and I don't know why some of them have the problem and some of them don't but often depending on the type of fabric often with the type of thread that you're using or the fabric that you're sewing with will cause this problem. Or if you're sewing along some loose fabric right along the edge, often it'll do that, have that problem. But I went through everything I could think of before I found the solution to that, that problem and, and asked somebody, do it, I need to have that pin there. And he referred to it as a D-Lint pin. And he said it doesn't need to be there and they can be removed. And it was part of what they called a knit kit for these 500s and I think maybe the 5, 503, the other ones that came along after this. Anyways, thanks. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.